Hi everyone. I'm going to read and explain the story, The Hero of Harlem today. In the next lesson, we will do a lot of questions and answers from within the lesson and also the exercises at the end of the lesson. But for today, to begin with, let's just try and understand the story well. So let's begin with the story and I will explain it to you. The Hero of Harlem by Mary Mapes Dodge. Here's what Harlem looks like. It is a place in the Netherlands. And here's another picture for you. And now let's begin with the story. Harlem is a city in the Netherlands. Netherlands means low countries. The ground there is lower than the level of the sea. Hard to imagine, isn't it? We have sea level and usually places are all above the level of the sea, above sea level. But in this case, it is below sea level. And hence, there is a possibility of the seawater going into the city. The people therefore build dikes all around the city, all around the country to prevent the seawater from rushing in. They have to do that because like I said, it is below the sea level. So any place that is below sea level has the risk of getting flooded. So to prevent that, they have to build dikes all around. These walls, dikes are nothing but walls. You can see a picture there on your screen. They are man-made walls, small little walls, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, depending. So these walls are nothing but dikes. They are important for the safety of the people. Now let us read a story about a boy, a very brave boy from Harlem who spotted something that did not look right. Let's begin the story. Many long years ago in the city of Harlem, there lived a very kind boy named Hans. Hans's father was in charge of taking care of the dikes or the stone walls that kept the seawater from rushing into Harlem and washing it away. So I hope you understood what Hans's father did. His duty was to look after the dikes. And what are dikes? Walls that are built around the entire city, around the entire country, because like we heard earlier, the country lies below the level of the sea. And so it is important to prevent the seawater from coming in. So they had all these dikes or walls, stone walls around. And Hans's father was in charge of looking after the dikes because sometimes these man-made structures can get weak. They might collapse at some point or they might have a little gap because something may get loose in between, a stone may get loose. So he had to look after the dikes and make sure that something like that never happened because that would be dangerous for the people. One day, Hans's father went on a trip. Since he usually spent his holidays watching his father care for the dikes, Hans had nothing to do. So Hans was free. I'm going to bake some bread and a few cakes, said Hans's mother. Why don't you take some to old Mr. Jansen this afternoon? So Hans's mother saw that he was getting bored and he was all alone and had nothing to do. So she decided to give him something to do. So she said, Hans, I'm going to bake some bread and cake. So why don't you take some for this old man, this kind old man who lives nearby, he's Mr. Jansen. Take it for him this afternoon. Here's what a dike looks like. This is, of course, a very small dike. Let's continue with the story. So Hans happily agreed, even though it was a rainy day. It was raining quite heavily, but Hans didn't mind doing that because, like we heard, he had nothing else to do. He was bored. 
Mr. Jansen was an elderly man whose eyesight was failing. He couldn't see very well. He had no family to care for him and he lived alone with his pet dog, Alphonse. So Mr. Jansen was living alone and he had only his pet dog as a companion. The pet dog's name was Alphonse. Hans's mother often helped him with his household chores. Chores meaning work that someone does normally. Things like running errands. So Hans's mother would help him because he was quite old and he couldn't see very well. He needed help. He had no one to help him. In the afternoon, Hans's mother packed a basket of cake and bread for Mr. Jansen. We will have dinner at six o'clock. So come back before that, she said, as she gave Hans the basket. I won't be late, replied Hans. Now you must be a little surprised to hear that they would have dinner at six o'clock. But in cold countries like these, people eat early because they cannot afford to stay awake later to have dinner at seven o'clock or eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. And you know, some of us even eat at 11 o'clock at night because we're so busy during the day doing other chores. But in a cold country, especially in a country that is so very cold, and in those days where central heating wasn't available, they would have to eat their dinner early so that they could get into bed earlier because it would get freezing cold as soon as the sun went down. So the longer they stayed up to do things, the colder they would feel. So dinner was scheduled for six o'clock and Hans promised that he would be back on time. It was a long walk to Mr. Jansen's house. He lived at the edge of town, close to the dikes. The spring rain had been much heavier than usual, pouring down hard each day and night while the wind turned the windmills and the rain watered the tulips, the strained and swollen dikes kept filling, worrying hands as he passed. The hard rain pelted him and the piercing cold wind stung his cheeks, but he pressed on, keeping his head down, hunching his shoulders and pulling his coat tight about him. So what happened? Hans was walking towards Mr. Jansen's house and it was quite a long walk and Mr. Jansen lived at the edge of town close to where the dikes were, these huge stone walls. And for the past couple of days, the rain had been much heavier than usual. It had been quite heavy every day and night. The wind was a lot, it turned the windmills and the rain watered the tulips. Tulips are flowers that grow mainly in this country. So they would not grow in a warm place. They would only grow in a cold place. So there were pretty tulips all over and the rain watered them. But there was one thing that happened that Hans did not like. That is the dikes were getting strained and swollen because it was raining so heavily every day and night the dikes seemed to be getting strained. That means he was worried that the dikes might collapse at any moment. They were holding water back too much. The hard rain pelted him. It, it was so heavy, it was so hard that it kind of hurt him as it fell on him. And the piercing cold wind, the wind was so cold that it pierced, it went through him and stung his cheeks. But he pressed on, he didn't give up. He kept walking forward, keeping his head down so that the wind and the rain did not hit him in the face. He kept his head down, he hunched his shoulders. That means he pulled his shoulders together, closer together. And he pulled his coat tight about him just to keep the wind away. Who will take care of the dikes if something goes wrong while father is away, wondered Hans. So now he had seen the dikes. He had seen the condition of the dikes. He was worried about it. And now he was even more worried because his father was away. 
And his father was the one who was in charge of looking after the dikes. So what he worried about was in case something happened to the dikes, who would do something about it? Hans reached Mr. Jansen's house with the basket of goodies, the nice things to eat. Mr. Jansen was delighted. He was very happy that Hans had come to visit him. Sit down, my lad, the old man said. The man invited him in and asked him to sit for a while because he was lonely. He had no one living with him. Mr. Jansen enjoyed telling Hans stories about how things were long ago and the boy loved to listen to him. Many of us don't like to listen to old people when they tell us stories about the past, isn't it? But Hans was different. He enjoyed listening to those stories. The old man and the boy talked and talked. They shared the cake and bread. Minutes turned into hours. So Hans was supposed to have been there for a short while, but he lost track of time. Suddenly Hans looked at the clock. It's past six o'clock, he exclaimed. I won't reach in time for dinner. Mother will be waiting for me. If you remember what we read earlier, mother had told him to be home in time for dinner and dinner was scheduled for six o'clock. But now it was past six o'clock because Hans had not realized that it was so late. He had been so busy listening to Mr. Jansen's stories and telling him his own stories. Hans quickly said good night to Mr. Jansen and began the long walk home. His wooden shoes clicked and clacked against the wet and muddy brick road. The rain had not let up. The street was empty. Everyone had got home, taking shelter from the cold rain. So here we learn a little about people who live in the Netherlands, in those days rather, because we learn in this paragraph that they usually wore wooden shoes and they had brick roads in those days, right? So Hans said goodnight to Mr. Jansen and he began walking home. His wooden shoes clicked and clacked against the wet and muddy brick road. The road was wet and muddy, so the wood made sounds like that, click, 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 click. The rain had not let up, that means the rain had not stopped. The street was empty, why? because no one wanted to be out in the rain, especially at that time, at six in the evening, when it was so cold, everyone had gone home taking shelter from the cold rain. Hans was thinking about a warm dinner and a cozy bed when he passed one of the many dikes. There were many dikes, right? Because the dikes had to extend all over right around the city. When he passed one of the many dikes, something did not look right. Hans crept closer to the dike to see. There, in the middle of the high stone wall, in between the stone blocks, was a small hole. From the hole seeped a thin trickle of water. While Hans knew that the dripping water looked harmless, he also knew that the water building up behind the great wall would push at the tiny hole until it became bigger and bigger. Soon, it would let the water come rushing through, washing away the town. Can you imagine that? Now, Hans had been with his father a lot. He had watched his father work, so he knew exactly what was wrong. When he passed the dike, and he saw a tiny hole. Maybe you or I would not have bothered so much about it. It was just a small little hole in the middle of the high stone wall, in between the stone blocks. You know, stone blocks were put close together and sealed up to build this wall. And in between, there was this tiny little hole. But from the hole seeped, that means a thin trickle of water was coming through coming through not fast, very slowly. And like I said, if it was you or I, we would not bother about it because it was a thin trickle of water. What harm could it do? But Hans, 
who had experience, who had been with his father, knew that even though that little trickle of water looked harmless, looked like it would not cause any harm, he knew that the water was building up behind the great wall and would be very happy to find a tiny hole in the wall so that it could try and push harder and come through that hole, thus making the hole bigger and bigger until the entire wall caved in. Then what would happen? Water would enter the city and flood the entire place. People would drown. It was a very dangerous thing. Help, hands called out. Someone help me. The dike is about to burst. The, the dike is going to burst. But the wind drowned out Hans's cries. He was sure nobody had heard him. There would be no help. Like we heard earlier, it was raining heavily. There was a strong wind. And if you try and shout help in such a situation, no one would have heard you because we have also read that the streets were empty. People had gone home. So he knew very well no one would hear him and no one would come to help. Hans knew he had to think fast and do something quickly. I will plug the hole with my hand, he decided, and he pushed his fist in the hole. What's a fist? You round your palm, close your fingers, and you get a fist. So he pushed his fist in the hole and the water stopped trickling. So what he did, did help. He plugged the hole using his hand. You can imagine how freezing cold that water might have been. And for a small boy to do something like that was really great. The rain kept pelting and the wind continued to swirl, but still Hans kept his fist plugged in the hole. It was horrible for a small boy to be there, a young boy to be there in the cold, such a windy night. I'll call it night because it was past six o'clock. It might have been very dark at that time. Cold, freezing cold. And he had his fist there against that cold, freezing water. But still, Hans kept his fist plugged in the hole and decided that he had to do it. He knew that in order to save his town, he could not let the water break through the dike. Then suddenly, standing before him, was Mr. Jansen, who had come out to walk Alphonse. Hans, he cried, what are you doing here? There is a leak in the dike, cried Hans. Please hurry and get help. Mr. Jansen immediately got help. Soon, a group of people came and repaired the dike. My lad, said Mr. Jansen, first I'll take you home, and then I'll tell everyone of the boy who saved the town. It's adapted because it's been changed a little so that it's easier for children to understand. That's all. It's the same story. So what happened next? Lucky, very lucky for Hans. Mr. Jensen happened to come out. And the only reason he came out is because he had a dog and he needed to walk his dog. Imagine walking your dog in the rain, though. My dog hated it. But maybe Alphonse loved to walk in the rain. And then he happened to see Hans and he asked Hans what he was doing. And when Hans explained to him, Mr. Jansen got help immediately. A group of people came, repaired the dike. And of course, Mr. Jansen first took the boy home, got him cleaned up, warmed up, and then told everyone about how he had saved the town. So Hans became a hero. Hans became the hero of Harlem. Harlem. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you understood, understood every aspect of it very well. Because in the next lesson, I'm going to have a lot of questions for you to answer and I hope you will be able to get them all right. Until we meet again, revise this lesson well so that you are prepared for my next class. Bye for now.